When I write, it's a weird feeling. It's more free than I allow myself to be when I'm around other people or when I'm alone. It's more open. What happens in an arts classroom? What are students learning? Um, this class makes me feel like I'm more experienced with my acting. It makes me feel funnier. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I just feel like I belong on stage. When I come to this class, I feel like we're always going to have fun. I just want to thank everybody at the Academy. Thank my agent for making me do this with no pay. If the creature would have a voice, it would sound like... Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Like that, sort of. When I make music, it's just kind of like there's no... No, nothing's stopping me, it's just you and the paper, there's nothing else around you, and you don't have to worry about what other people will think. Well, I, I do acting for a passion. It makes me feel free. I dance because it makes me happy, and I just want to prove a lot of people wrong that, you know, anybody could dance, and dancing's for everybody. If you feel like you could dance, then go ahead and do it. When we make art, we develop skills that stretch our minds. Making art invites us to take risks, think critically, reflect deeply, trust uncertainty, make connections, imagine possibilities, and persist. These skills, over time and with practice, help us navigate the world with confidence. Come with us to witness young people practice just a few of these skills, and ask yourself as you're watching, could this happen in every classroom? Uh, risk is risk is probably the most important thing for an actor to have. I don't care how good of an actor you are, I don't care how long you've been doing it, you walk on stage in front of people, you're going to get nervous. Period. And so if they can learn to uh, get beyond themselves, take the risk, and dive into a scary situation, that's where greatness can occur. That's where the magic can occur. <laughs> what? You just smiled. What? <laughs> What and what do you say? I failed! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> so it's, guys, it's, it's Darlin, if you love me, won't you please, please smile? Yeah. And, then, and then you reply with, Darlin, I love you, but I just can't smile. Smile. And then you say, Henry. <laughs> Darlin, I love <laughs> you. Good. I failed! Nice! <laughs> In taking risks, they're going to try, they're going to make bold choices. They're going to try things that they normally would not have tried. And that's where we'll get something that's not self-conscious, that will communicate something genuine. And so I encourage my students all the time to take risks, and we celebrate risks even when they fail. And that's where the whole, I failed thing came from, you know, like, uh, and I want them to commit to it, right? It's like, I failed! I, you know, it's a, it's a victory when they fail, because that means they took a risk. <laughs> I love you, won't you please, please smile. Puppy's dying, puppy's dying. <laughs> the risks that teaching artists um, invite people to undertake, they're real risks. They actually invite you to do stuff you've never done before that you could look silly and you could feel embarrassed. There's some real cost involved, but they make you come right up against what you know and choose to go a little bit beyond. Now, I'm gonna ask you guys to lead with a certain part of your body, okay? Like the tip of your nose, for example. So what does it mean to lead with a body part? Allow a character to form from this. If it's the tip of the nose, maybe you walk around like this, and maybe you kind of look down on people. There's a million and one possibilities. Um, I want you guys to follow whatever first impulse comes to you about this, okay? So when I clap my hands, I want you to lead with your wrists, whatever that means to you. Good, Jonathan. So guys, this is a great example because there's so many, they're all doing something different. Through the process of art making, you have to stay open. You have to participate in what you're making and you're not as scared. You go through the work of working in an art form and your fear really diminishes. I think the key thing they can take away from it is that they can make mistakes and that they can, they can do something that's not perfect and that it's all right. I mean, that's a skill I hear people in the business world tell me 
all the time. They want in their employees. They don't want them taking risks all over the place, but they do want them taking appropriate risks because that's what moves them forward. All right, now this time I want you to lead with your gut. Allow a character to form. Where are you going? What do you want? Guys, this time I want us to focus on what we want more than anything else, okay? That's kind of the crux of acting. The action is what you want. Okay, good. And freeze. What's your name? Sam. Hey, Sam. What's the matter? Yeah, food poisoning. Oh, I'm sorry. That happened to me last week. It was in Egypt, and I ate some almonds, and I didn't know that they had food poisoning stuff in the food. Oh, oh man. So what's been happening? My stomach. Have you been, been, have you been throwing up? Oh, yes. I'm really sorry to hear that. Uh, how long has this been going on? Four weeks. Four weeks. So where are you going right now? The hospital. Yeah, after four weeks, I would too. Hopefully, people that come into this class and are maybe in their shells a little bit, uh, hopefully by the end of the class they're less in their shell than they were when they came in. And if I can accomplish that with them in this in eight weeks, then what what a great thing for their lives, especially at this age. Give them more courage. I failed. I failed. I failed. <laughs> I've been trying to really get kids to tap into their imagination, so I, I coined this phrase, Imaginaut. I don't know where, how I came up with it, but it was like Imaginaut, like I, instead of an astronaut, an outer space traveler, that what artists are, they're, they're internal space travelers. And so I develop our projects around that concept this year, and really getting them to just trust their imagination. Good job, thank you you guys. You know what we're gonna do first, before we start working on our, um, our Imagine Not Franken Babies. We're just gonna do a little stretching, okay? So you need to like spread out a little bit. I just wanna get us focused. We need to do a little focusing first. And then down below are the mud people. Remember the mud people that live in the earth? And they are pulling us the other way. Uh, and they let us go and our hands go all wobbly. Uh, okay, put your hand on your heart. Close your eyes and listen to the rhythm inside your body. Close your eyes. Nobody should be talking right now. You should only li be listening on the inside. I trust that all the artists in here are listening to the sound inside them. Her, her method it seems to be to uh, really focus on the imagination and, and their inner abilities and to let them bring those out without specifying what's perfect or what's great and I think that in itself sort of puts them at, at the edge of their comfort zone because they want to know what do I have to do, when does it do, what, what's it going to be, is it five paragraphs or six paragraphs, what is it and when she tells them well no it's you know it's it's this amorphous thing that's way out here they just can't you know it, it puts them at the edge of their comfort zone and I think that's where you learn. Uh oh check out my new glasses so I can see now. Oh. <laughs> you know what these are? These are my serious. These are my serious art teacher glasses. So what Anna's gonna do? She's gonna look at her design, okay, and she's gonna take the sharpie marker, okay. So this is my Franken baby. So I'm gonna change him, okay. So I'm gonna give him. I'm giving him a shirt. Yeah, that's much better. Because, you know, I was getting a little tired of him being naked all the time. Uh, I think of powerful learning experiences as experiences which truly change us. They change our minds, the way that we think and how we understand the world. And they change our relationship to the world. We have to let go of the ways that we've understood things and we have to enter the possibility that for a short or a long period of time, we may really not understand what's going on, why something is the way that it is. See if you can stick that finger in there and push that down there. See it, stick your finger in there, okay? Right there, push that in there. Push more, can you find it? They want to know the answers because they want to they want to be right and correct and they want to do well, so they feel like they have to have the answers and so in li life isn't like that. To live in that space of not understanding is essential in order to get to a place where we do understand.
We are creating greater points of entry for learning. We're creating, through the arts, opportunities for young people to say, oh, I heard what you said. Let me think about it and let me spit it back out in a way that is meaningful to me and is also clear and relevant and succinct. Uh, it's kind of like an ultimate monster movie guy. Just has all the monster movie ideas from, from Frankenstein, Werewolf, uh, Dracula, and, and, dang, I Oh yeah, and the mummy. I started like this, but I turned it around. Then it looked. Then it started like this, and I just kept building it. And um, about the um, the arrow, I just um, thought of it because it was so cool. This work is about really trusting how they move through the world. You know, they come into the world with everything. And as young children and preschoolers and stuff, their imagination is wild and it's really supported. And then when they go into elementary school, they have to start fitting within the system, the educational system, which is the system that is preparing them for the work world. And so the, a lot of that stuff starts dropping down. So if we can support our children and our youth in what they see, their ability to help affect positive change on the planet can just be even more powerful. Learning multiple rhythms and polyrhythms, it's, it's, it's very challenging because, you know, you're working your ability to hear multiple things at the same time. In order to make it work, you not only have to focus on what you're doing, but you have to hear what the person is doing right next to you or, the, or, or multiple things going on. So you want to let the kids know that the, what they're trying is difficult and it's okay to make mistakes and not get it the first time around, but not to give up and to keep going because ultimately, the rewards are that you will get it and that you will make progress. And the only way to do that is through persistence. Yeah. Okay, very first thing, grab your shakers. Okay, I gotta grab my shaker too. Here it is. Okay. So get your hand in the shake, good shaker position up here in the top. There we go. And remember, if you get tired, just keep it right in here. Okay, ready? Here we go. You can see it in the, the kids. Their ability to consume information is stronger. You know, you're exercising those cognitive abilities just by working in those areas of the brain. And take a break. Okay, so that was one rhythm. Let's go to the next rhythm, okay? Let's go to the qua rhythm. Who okay? remembers the words that we use to remember this particular ribbon? La, tuba, tuba, bla, tuba, tuba, bla, tuba, tuba, bla. Nice. Tuba. Nice. Excellent. I think they're really starting to understand that they're speaking in another language, that, they're, that they really are expressing themselves. You know, we have lots of conversations about how music is just like reading. You know, you, ha you build your fluency by reading a lot, and music is the same way. There's lots of different pieces that, to learn, and doing it over and over for long periods of time, building your stamina um, makes you a better musician and able to be more creative with it, just like with reading or with writing. So that was warming up the shakers. Now the other thing that we want to do, and this is a hard thing to do, is to try to play one rhythm and try to say another rhythm. This kind of stuff just takes practice. The more you do it, the easier it gets, okay? Okay, you guys ready? Clave? Clave position, everybody ready? And here we go. Doom, da, da, doom, da, da. Now listen to it. Just use your, your hands and your mind. Chuku tuku, chuku tuku. Chuku tuku, chuku tuku. Chuku tuku, chuku tuku. Discipline is something that I think that most people just associate with the sciences and math. But in reality, it takes a lot of discipline to kind of experience art and culture or actually participate as an artist in art and culture. It's a mental habit for approaching your work where you go back again and again in spite of failure, in spite of sort of what you might perceive as a mistake, and you inject a fair amount of your own will. I think children do have a, um, a growing sense that uh, you don't do it the first time that you really have to stay with it. You have to be persistent. I love this about you, that everybody wants to try this. Everybody wants to take the risk. You may get up here and mess up. Is that okay? Yeah. 
You bet it's okay. Everybody in here really wants to try it, and I appreciate you wanting to do that. Um, to try it, make the mistakes, feel the success, go for it. We need we need a quad player. Noah, is that a quad player? All right, sure. Yes. Okay, let's try it together. Doom. Chocoto, doom. Chocoto, doom. Chocoto, doom. Chocoto, keep going. Choco, keep going. Keep going, keep going. Doom. Choco, eh. Pra tu pa tu pa. 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 I'm a real uh, believer that anybody can learn anything if you break it down into small enough units. Um, and so I really try to start from the basic, from ground level, and then add little, little obstacles for them to try to get. So, pra, tu, pa, tu, pa. Pra, tu, pa, tu, pa. Pra, tu, pa, tu, pa. Pra, go, keep going, keep going, keep going. Saying it to yourself. And then speed it up just a little bit more. Can you go a little bit faster? Go ahead. A little bit faster. A little bit faster. Faster. Pra tu pa tu pa. Pra tu pa. Keep going. Don't don't change. If you discourage kids too fast or anybody for that matter, they're gonna get disillusioned and they're gonna get, you know, they're gonna get turned off. They're not gonna wanna do pursue it. But if you can make people can achieve small goals and get excited about it, then they're gonna wanna pursue it. They're sitting there with these drums that can be very intimidating and they're being taught a certain, certain structure and they have to do that in front of the rest of the kids and you know they go for it. They really go for it and I think that crosses over to other parts of their day when they're asked to you know write about an experience they had or when they're um, given a new book to read. You know taking that risk that it that it might be challenging and there will be success. They know that there will be success. Over the years, we've gathered statistics. We've had a ton of anecdotal evidence. You have the Kennedy Center. You have the Center for Arts Education. You have the Empire State Partnership Grant. You have all of these organizations. It's the evidence is there. What's happening is that we don't have a ton of people who themselves have experienced it in an integrated way. They haven't witnessed what we're talking about. And so what I would tell people if I were in Olympia or if I were in Washington, D.C., is really come and see it. Come and see a classroom where kids have the opportunity to really learn through the arts and see how much more confident they are as learners. If you want less art so you can have more time for math and science and all that stuff, you are being sort of a penny smart, pound foolish. I think uh, what you're going to what you're going to wind up with is kids who are going to be tuning you out and yawning and saying, "Are we done yet?" and all that. When you have art, the kids get excited, they get pumped up, and they are learning without knowing they're learning. As the adults, as the teachers, the educators, we can do all kinds of things to create the conditions for a powerful learning experience, but we actually really need the, um, the willing engagement of the learner. I think that's why people misunderstand arts education so much. They think, oh, violins, or oh, clay. And in fact, those are rich media in which to solve interesting problems. But the stuff that lights up learning is about the cognitive tasks, the quality of engagement, and the quality of the inquiry you're involved in. It's something they already love. I don't have to convince them to love it. And so if I can teach them other things through those art forms, I've already got them. I didn't grow up in a household where the arts were prime, but there were community-based organizations and my schools were really invested in the arts. And so if I had something to say, I'd tell you that I'm a product of it. I'm, in, I'm the Deputy Director for Education and Public Programs. I have two degrees in art history and the arts changed my life. The arts are the most powerful tool out there to help redesign the paradigm or the system, to be reflective of the student's needs and not just the system's needs. And it's out there, it's ready, it's well tested, 
There's a lot of research and there's a lot of practitioners. We just have to decide to make that a priority. Why isn't it recording? <laughs>